Okay, uh, today I'm going to talk about understanding and implementing PSR. This was, uh, I give this talk, actually not a talk, I gave this as a two and a half hours workshop back in PHP Conference Asia 2016. Okay, uh, it's not going to be two and a half hours today. I will try to cut short, probably, hopefully, 45 minutes. Uh, okay, so something about myself, uh, my name is Zion, I'm from Singapore, so my website is zion.sg. I'm a freelance web and mobile developer. I'm also the co-organizer together with uh, Michael and Hui Ren, uh, serving NS uh, for the PHP user group as well as PHP Conference Asia. So if you want to find out more about me, you can visit my website. So the talk agenda today, uh, what is PSR? Uh, PSR 0, 1, 2, 4, and 7. Okay, so what is PSR? PSR stands for PHP Standards Recommendation. It was proposed by the PHP Framework Interoperability Group, or FIG for short. So what happens is uh, back in 2009, a group of framework developers at a conference at PHP Tech say, hey, um, let us stop fighting each other. Why not let us uh, come together? We try to find uh, common ways to work together and uh, we try to make life easier for PHP developers. So that's how PSR came out about. So it started from five people and then it grew to 20 people, now probably about 30 to 40 voting members. So some of the members uh, include uh, Composer, Drupal, uh, I think Magento. Uh, and Zen framework. Uh, the, some pe projects may come in, uh, going and go out at like Laravel. Uh, from what I know, Laravel actually has left uh, FIG. So the projects, they adopt these standards because they want developers, the users who use their projects like uh, Zen framework um, to actually be exposed to best practices. So this is the website, php-fig.org. Now there's about 20 over PSRD or proposals or standards that they re recommend. So um, this is another thing. So why, why standards? Okay, this is a popular SKCD uh, website. So the main thing is PHP having a very low barrier to entry. Okay, it sees many projects and developers with different standards, different styles, different designs. So this has led to the impression that PHP is lousy. Okay, but people always forget that actually PHP powers about 79% of the websites in the world. So what happens is this, uh, the projects that actually came together to form FIG, they want to propose these standards, okay, so that we can learn about best practices, we can practice them, and actually uh, we make life better and we ensure that we still can get employed as PHP developers. So some common terminology in PSR, uh, as according to RFC 2119, so you see must, must not, require, shall, shall not, all this, this would be, all the definitions are under RFC 2119. So when people have requests for comments, when they put up proposal, to make the language more specific, they will use this uh, common terminology. So we come to uh, PSR0, the auto-loading standard. So in the beginning, <coughs> uh, when I say I want to have a login web page, I will have a form. And then after that, when I submit the form, I will actually open up an internet connection. And after that, I'll process and run some SQL query and then check whether the password and the username match. Later on, okay, but this code is quite, it's a piece of spaghetti code. You are missing data with logic, with presentation. So later on, uh, okay, let us, make, let us make things uh, neater. So we actually put the uh, SQL connection string inside a connection.php and we put some functions inside a functions.php. So instead of running one big chunk of code over here to check the logging, we just relegate it to a method called is logging valid. So it looks neater. So for PHP, how do they actually find the include files? So under your php.ini, your PHP configuration file, there is a property called include underscore path. So usually when you say include, you'll try to find in the current directory. If not, you look through the include path and find, keep finding until it finds the file. So in PHP 5.3, namespaces were actually introduced so that actually they can differentiate. Um, 
where are the files from and uh, how do you actually separate your files. So for example, you have a class foo, so this belongs to foo.php. You have your namespace foo and you have a class bar. So probably this will become libraries, library slash foo slash bar.php. And if you go even further, you can have your namespace bus, you use this file, and you have a class codes. So this file itself will be libraries slash bus slash codes.php. Now, you don't see any line we call include a certain file. You only see a namespace. Namespace blah 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 use full slash bar. So how does PHP actually find these files? They find these files usually using something called uh, autoloader. Okay, this is actually how you register autoloader. Okay, I'll show a sample of how the autoloader works later. So PSR0, these are from the specifications, compulsory. A fully qualified namespace, as you saw just now, okay, must have the following structure. Vendor, slash vendor name, slash namespace, slash another few lists of sub namespaces and a class name. So this is an example. So in this case, foo is a vendor name, bar and bus are the sub namespaces and coots is a class name. So each namespace separator, which you saw the slash just now, is converted to a directory underscore separator when loading from the file system. For Windows, the directory separator is a uh, backslash, okay, backslash. For Unix and uh, Mac, the directory separator is a uh, forward slash. So, and each underscore in the class name is converted to a directory uh, separator. This one I'll explain later. And finally, the class name is suffix. That means you dot, add a dot .php to the end when loading from the file systems. Okay, let's see some examples. Can I see? Okay, now. Okay, over here, when I say uh, use namespace slash dot string slash common slash isolated class loader, so PHP will actually translate it to your project path your vendor directory, slash dot tree, slash common directory, slash isolated class loader dot PHP. Some other examples for, let's say you use Zen ACL, you translate to path to project and slash Zen directory, slash ACL dot PHP. Now what happens in PHP 5.2 before namespaces were introduced in PHP 5.3? Uh, developers actually use underscore. We say we don't have namespaces, so why not we come up with our fake namespaces? So they actually use underscores. So uh, how do you deal with underscores? So underscores is if you have underscore in the class name, it will be translated to a directory separator. So class underscore name translate to class slash name dot php. How about if you have underscore in the package name? package underscore name, this will be retained. This will not be converted to a uh, directory separator. So package name will retain. Only underscores in the class name will be, will be converted to slashes. So this is an example. Uh, the code here, this is example autolo function. It takes in a simple class name. So first you take out the leading slash and you replace all the other slashes with the correct directory separator, which is namely Microsoft Windows. So if your Microsoft Windows have all the bad slash, all the bad slash, you will convert everything to the forward slash. And finally, you will append .php to the class name, and you replace all the underscore with the correct directory separator. And finally, this is the most important one, SPL underscore autolo underscore register. You register this function. So when you say use a namespace, when you refer to a class, PHP will actually say, how to find the file? How do I include the file? I will find all the functions that is registered with the autoload SPL. In this case, this function, I will use this function. I'll pass it a class name, which will return me the correct file to include. 
and that is PSR 0. Okay, next we go to PSR 1, the basic coding standards. So, um, let's look at all these names. Yes. Imagine you go to a company and you see some legacy code and there are no naming conventions. So people can name anything they like. Imagine you are the senior developer, you are doing a code review, right? You will probably go crazy. So why can't everyone be consistent? Now, standards are not hard and fast. People are not hard and fast. Most importantly is that you have consistency. Okay? So for example, like, uh, how many of you actually uh, prefer the third one? Full bar, okay? How many actually will prefer this one? Capital full, capital bar. And how many of you will prefer all caps? Okay. So for PSR 1, basic coding standard, for files, files must only use the angle question mark PHP and the angle question mark equal text. Now for those of you who are old enough like me, you, you remember that actually PHP last time could start with angle percentage. Okay, which was a little used for ASP files. Okay, that was a very long time ago. Uh, but for PHP files, they must, on, they must only use these two tags. Files must only use UTF-8 without BOM. BOM stands for byte order mark. Um, if you have a text file, save without the byte order mark, and you are using a very old text editor that is not Unicode aware, then the text editor will be able to open it now nicely. So it's kind of a backwards compatibility. Now, files should either declare symbols or call side effects, but not do both. So we have a negative example over here. Now, any underscore, underscore set, this is a side effect because you are changing configuration settings. Include file.php, this is a side effect because it loads a file. Echo something. This is a side effect because it generates output. Function full, class full. This is a declaration. So that means that in your PHP file, the entire file is either producing side effects or declaring classes and methods. You should not do both. Now, namespaces and class names. Namespaces and classes must follow an auto-loading PSR. That means your namespace must follow PSR 0 or 4, which I will talk about later. Class names must be declared in studly caps. Okay, I have no idea uh, what it means. Normally, we call it Pascal case. So, it starts with a capital letter and every subsequent word starts with a capital letter. So, this is an example. Class full. This is for PHP 5.3 and later. For 5.2 and earlier, your namespace will actually be using the uh, underscore character. Okay, of course, I'm sure nobody, uh, none of us here is using PHP 5.2 already. Class constants, properties, and methods. Class constants must be declared in all uppercase with underscore separators. Methods must be declared in camel case. Camel case means start with a small letter, every subsequent word start with a capital letter. So this is an example. Your constant date underscore approve equals to something, the constant version in capital letter. Your method name start with a small letter, and every subsequent word start with a capital letter. And just four slides. So that's all for PSR1. So what is the catch? The catch is PSR2. PSR2 actually builds on PSR1. Okay, there are a, a lot, a lot of opinions. And there's a lot of survey results. After I'll show you, it's quite interesting. Uh, they actually asked uh, all the 22 members at the time to actually vote. And they will pick the most popular choice and that is your standard. Okay. I'm not going to talk so much. Why not we go one round, okay? Uh, this is an example. This will show, actually show some rules for PSR2. Okay, uh, let's go one round. Uh, would you like to guess uh, one PSR2 from this example? Let's uh, look at it, the first three lines. PSR2, no, it's not. No. You need to keep the space between the PHP talk and the namespace. Ah, okay. Actually, this one I'm not quite sure. Like. 
<laughs> Frankly speaking, this, this one, this one, this one, I'm not quite sure. Uh, between the PHP tag and the namespace, right, there's supposed to space this one, uh, blank line. This one, I'm not quite sure, frankly speaking. Okay, uh, they are looking to extending PSR2. Okay, but I can tell you that there is supposed to be a blank line between namespace and use statement. And there must be a blank line between use and the class. Uh, anyone else want to guess another rule? Anyone? Yes, the, the braces after the condition is to follow the condition. Uh, the PSR, this one? Yes, PSR1, the brace was one line up below. Okay, so uh, this, this line, right? Yeah, the braces. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what Gus is saying that for conditioners, for blocks, for while loop, for try catch, your opening brace must be on the same line. Must be on the same line. Okay. Any other guesses? Any other guesses? Let's look at this one. Extends bar implements full interface. Can I put implement first and then extend afterwards? No. No. Okay. So let me ask you. Why? Because that is a PHP rule. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. Now the thing is. In PHP, you can only extend one class. You can only extend inherit one parent class, but you can implement many interfaces. So, extends first, implement, follow at the back. Uh, how about this one? These are uh, method parameters. Method parameters. Do you see anything special about this? Okay, very good. Uh, optional parameters are uh, at the back. That means uh, they have their own values. Uh, anything else? The bracelet again. Hmm? The bracelet. Uh, okay, for classes and methods, the opening brace will start on the next line, not on the same line. Now, look at this. For method parameters, they must be, sp they must be separated by a comma and a space. You cannot have dollar a comma dollar b. You must have dollar a comma space dollar b. Um, let's see. Ah, uh, how about how about this one? Dollar a equals to dollar b. Space around the operator. Okay, correct. Space around the operator. Now, how about? The space between the bracket and the first uh, value. Can I have bracket space dollar a? No. no, correct. But WordPress follows it differently. For WordPress, what you will have is the WordPress standards. They will coincidentally also help to organize WordPress meetup. La. So uh, of course I won't say this. <laughs> uh, for WordPress, what you will have is this. Super glow was on the way. Okay, um, they mandate for the WordPress standards, which doesn't follow PSR, they will actually mandate that there must be a space after the opening bracket. Okay, but not so for PSR. For PSR2, there must be a space before the opening bracket and no space after the closing bracket. Then same thing, no space before the closing bracket and one space between the bracket and the space uh, and the brace opening brace. Now, you notice that these three conditioners, they only have one stick, one line. It's only a one-liner. Is it okay if I skip the opening brace and the closing brace? No. no. Uh, back in, I think, 2000, is it 2009? Uh, there was a bug in actually uh, in Apple's uh, SSL library. It was due to this opening brace and uh, closing brace. Because uh, it's all one line, right? Why you just add, add one more character? So you just skip it. So it turns out that uh, because of this opening brace and closing brace issue, right, they miss out a line and then uh, it fails the check. So the whole SSL library had a vulnerability. So even if your if else statement has only one line, you are supposed to enclose it in opening and closing braces. Okay, finally, final public static function bar. Final public static or abstract public static, abstract private static is in this order you cannot have static static public final static abstract pu public blah 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 yeah <laughs> there is, there is, a, there is a, uh, 
yeah. Okay, it must be in this order. So abstract and final first, then the visibility which is public, protected, private, and then static, if that's a static. So just now I mentioned, no question whether you can see this actually. Uh, um, let's see here. Uh. Okay, now for indent type, I told you there are 22 members. How many of you want tab? Seven people. How many of you want two spaces? How many of you want four spaces? 14 people. So that's why PSR2 says that you must indent your code with four spaces. Now, a lot of them actually, uh, they use version control in their project. So they know that actually spaces can help uh, with diff, with patches, with history. It's easier to look. For tabs, your Microsoft Word may open a tab as 1.25 cm. My Microsoft Word might uh, treat a tab as 2 cm. But a space is a space everywhere. So in uh, space, you can actually easily indent things. Uh, how about line length? Is there a limit? So line length limit soft. Okay, the most word is actually 80. So usually in my subline tabs, uh, let me see. Uh. Oh. Wait, uh. And we see that projector has a concalc. Is there another? Let's see. Engineers not actually. Oh. Wait. Do you have another USB C? So they say that actually PSR is a very hot topic. That's why uh, the projector is uh, overheated. So um, normally, okay, I'll just continue talking while uh, it's being fixed. So normally in the editor, you find that there's a line, you can specify a line, they say that, okay, this is an 80 character mark, okay? But it's not hard, it's a soft limit. So actually you can go beyond, let's say you have comments or something. Why 80? Uh, if you come from a very old generation, you use an old terminal, that's 80 by 25 terminal window. Uh, if you have a very big screen, if you have 80 characters, you can actually put two windows side by side and you see you can see your code side by side. Uh, the, the other limit is 120. So try as much as possible. I'm not quite sure whether you can see this. Uh, you see, I'm not quite sure whether you can see this line here. This is my 80 mark. And then this is my 120 mark. Something like that. Okay. Uh, let's see, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, ah, true and false, and now, should it be lowercase or uppercase, lowercase, lowercase, ah, huh? uh, let me see, closing PHP tag required, no, if your entire file contains only PHP code, that means you have no mixed HTML or anything, right? You do not need to close it. Okay, so this was the results. This is how you came about PSR2. Just some random 22 people, they decided to vote. Okay, they'll pick the best vote, the most popular choice, and that is your standard. Now, there are many coding style fixes out there. Uh, one by Sensio Labs, another one, the Code Sniffer. And you can also integrate Travis for your for your to code to check your style. So when you commit to a repository, okay. So example over here, you actually run it through Travis, and you run through a code. So I have a Travis dot YML. So over here, when I run it, when I commit to the repository, you will trigger a test, a build on the Travis CI, and you will run this file. Composer test and check for coding styles. And over here, you find that, oh, okay, they run through everything for you. So this is part of continuous uh, integration. Let me show you one example. 
I have a sample of PHP with some errors. PHP CS dot file. This is the PHP archive. It's like a executable to run through a code sniffer. So what happens when I run it? So actually, you go through the file and tell me where are all the errors. So for example, here on line four. Class constants must be uppercase. So let us look at line four. Line four, which is here. Okay, constants are supposed to be uppercase, so it detected. So it can also help to fix the error if there's a later on. Okay. PSR file, PSR four. Okay, it's another auto loading standard. Is to uh, is to actually replace uh, PSR zero. So actually PSR zero is deprecated. Already. Every new PSR that seeks to fix or complement it normally will deprecate the previous uh, PSR. So composer is the PHP dependency dependency manager. So why bother replacing it? Okay, PSR zero was based on the pair installer. Pair installer move all the source file from the packages into one directory. But for once you have composer, composer can actually handle different directories for different libraries. So for example, you have uh, three libraries and they are in all different places on your hard disk or on your server. Composer can manage that. So an example, PSR zero. Supposing I have vendor name slash package name slash class. So this is how the directory structure will look like. Vendor name slash package name slash source slash vendor name again slash package name again then slash class name dot php okay but for psr4 because of the update you can do a flatter directory structure vendor name slash package name slash source slash class name dot php easier these are some examples for example let's say look at aura slash web slash response slash status and this is where the library is stored so you will actually translate to aura web slash source slash response slash status dot php how about zen acl supposing the zen library is installed on slash user slash includes so this is where composer will find the file for zen acl dot php slash user slash includes slash zen slash acl.php so if psr4 is much easier you can actually call your libraries store your libraries in different locations now the last psr i'm going to talk about is psr7 the http message interface this according to matthew will ovini he's a team lead for zen framework it's the most exciting P psr and frankly speaking i gave this talk first in 2016 now 2019 after about four or five more psrs have uh, appeared this to me is still the most exciting psr okay in the beginning if i want to have a form okay and i want to output a city so i'll take in the query parameter city equals to sg so you say city is singapore and then you can type in some text after that you will say you type what text later on if i will do use a framework zen framework level framework symphony framework i will write a controller i will extend something a proprietary class in that session i'll get a request i will get the text that the person key into the form and i'll return a view model how do i get a city here over here i append question mark city equals to sg so how do i get this parameter i will call this method params many frameworks and there are many different ways of doing this and they are all using their own property classes for doing this now there is a similarity towards all this you have a request you process it and then you return a response so you have all these frameworks out there, Aura, Code Uniter, Symphony, Cake, Laravel, Zen Framework, Gazer, Bus. So the problem is, all of them, 
they deal with this okay, differently. They come up with their own classes to extract your web application. So what do they abstract? They abstract the form post. They server super global. They extract, they extract the request URI. They handle file uploads, input output strings, and the returning of response. So every framework have their own ways of doing it. And you cannot reuse it. You cannot take this piece of code for Laravel and then easily use it in Zen framework. So this is a web application in its simplest form. You have a request going to the server and you have a response. And in short, a request is basically a verb, get, post, put, patch, the URI and the protocol version. And the response consists of the protocol version, a response code, and a reason phrase. So it looks similar. A request and response basically in its most simplest form is basically just a message that has a verb, a URI, a protocol, and a body. So this is the overview of PSR7. They recommend interfaces for PSR7. So if your project, if this library, if this framework implements PSR7, they will implement this interface, interfaces, but PSR do not detect the implementation details. You are welcome to do your own uh, hacky or uh, fantastic way or fancy way of implementation, but you just have to follow the interface. So first one, a message. A request and a response is basically a message. So if you were to use a PSR 7 compatible library, you will be guaranteed of all these methods. Get headers, get body, with header, with body. Now what's the difference? Hmm? Ah. Okay, PHP passes objects by reference. So in this view, PSR actually detects that all these methods should return new instances. You shouldn't modify the original object. Or else when you pass the object to somewhere else down the line, right, you may accidentally edit or change the original object and everything goes haywire. So when you are modifying, you will actually return a new instance. So with header, we'll return a new message. With body, we'll return another new message instance. A request. A request interface it, uh, extends a message interface. So you have get method, get URI, a body, which is a stream. So in this case, this will chain up and actually this will return uh, four different instances. So let's say if I want to construct a request with a get method, with a URI, with a body, this is how I will do it. So you don't need to remember, okay, Zen framework constructs a request using this class and uh, these methods. Laravel uh, constructs a request using this cl class and these methods. You don't need to remember this anymore. PSR7, you only need to remember one set of methods. A response. A response has a status code, a reason phrase, and, uh, and as well as a body. And with a, so this is how you uh, generate a new response with body, with status. Server request interface. This is built on top of request interface because PHP have server variables, like your server super global. So how do you get the create parameters? How do you get a pass body? How do you get the uploaded files? This is so you use a server request interface. And suppose if I have a query parameter, question mark ID equals to five, how do I get that parameter? I will actually use get attribute. So the application must pass the route and inject it into the request attributes. Stream interfaces are uh, the request body and the response body both use streams. Now, how many of you have worked dollar underscore files before? These are files super global. Okay, okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, very good. Now, supposing if I were to upload two files and then I open up the so the dollar underscore files, do you think this is the structure of the array? Is this correct or wrong? 
So I uploaded two files, huh? file zero and file one. So you have an array. Under the files, you have zero, which is the first file, name and type. And you have uh, the second file, name and type. Okay, this is wrong. The actual, yes, correct. The actual structure of the array will be like this. You have your files, you have a name property. The name for the first file is here, the name for the second file is here. You have another property called type. The type for the first file is here, and the type for the second file is here. Okay, so this is very confusing. Imagine you have to pass this manually by hand. So PSR 7, they came out with an uploaded file interface. You don't need to worry about that anymore. Okay, if you are using a PSR 7 library, so you just need to get the uploaded files on the request and to get the name, file, get client file name, to get the size over here. You don't need to remember, okay, uh, actually I must read the size key and then read the third uh, file to get the size of the third file. You don't need to do that anymore. Now, what's in a URI? Uniform Resource Identifier. You have your scheme, you have your authority, you have your port, you have a path, you have a query string, and you have a fragment. Sounds easy, right? Okay. Imagine trying to manually compose your UI using your server super global. You get, if you output your server super global, you get all these variables, and you're supposed to reconstruct the UI by yourself. Okay, so PSR 7 came out with a URI interface. All the PSR 7 libraries out there, they will have all these methods. So in order for you to get a path, just call get path. You don't need to worry, uh, what, which one do I actually look for, the path, or do I need to uh, explode this by the question mark, explode this by the equal, no need. Okay, just call these methods. So now, information overload. There's a lot of methods, a lot of interfaces. So why is this the future of PHP? Okay, the answer is actually middleware. Okay, I'm going to show you briefly the sample lab that I did during the uh, conference back then. Uh, okay, I have a lab here. So this is a uh, typical uh, PHP application using Composer. So let's look at what Composer have. Okay, um, require, these are the libraries that I use, PSR slash HTTP message, uh, I implement getting the interfaces over here. Zen Diatros and Zen Strategility is basically an implementation of PSR 7. Remember, PSR 7 only contain interfaces. They do not contain implementation, implementation details. So what Zen Framework did was uh, they came up with their own library to implement PSR 7. So auto load over here, I'm using PSR 4. Now let's see. Now what happens? When I run the application, I put question mark target equals to Zion. So it will say hello Zaya. Very simple, it takes in the query parameter and then it outputs hello my name. Okay, this is the contents. Very simple, I will just call the auto load from composer. I will use a pipe. I run through my config and I will listen. Okay, let me show you what's inside config.php. Now, middleware. Middleware is like an onion, okay? So supposing, let's say, in a fast food chain, so uh, the customer comes to me, say I want a uh, uh, vegetarian burger. So I tell the first person, the first, first person takes a bun, and then that is the, his response. He pass it to the next person, the person put a patty, the next person puts a vegetable, then after that, pass back to the second person. Pass back to the first person, he put the top bun, and then he pass back to the cashier, and the cashier pass to the customer. So the request goes in all the way to the end, and then the response comes out all the way to the end. So everyone adds on. So you have, a, let's say, a factory, factory production line. You have a, 
in this case a middleware pipeline so in this case my middleware pipeline currently only has one application hello action so let's look at what hello action has okay first thing it uses PSR response interface and PSR server request interface look carefully this is a plain old PHP class I do not extend any framework specific controllers or class at all this is a plain old PHP class this was the original way to do middleware it has been since replaced by PSR 15 uh, so you have to invoke you take in the PSR 7 request uh, PSR 7 response and a callable nets callable nets so first thing how do I get this dollar uh, this question mark target equals to Zion how do I get this query parameter I will get it from here query equals to request get query params this method is a PSR 7 method not a framework specific method now uh, target I'll just get it from here how do I get a body how do I create a, a how do I create a new response first I create a body so I write a body get body and I write a stream hello Zion and I'll create a new response with header content type test HTML and I pass it to the next middleware so imagine like factory production line you have three people so first it comes to the first middleware process with it, I process the request I formulate my response I pass the request and the response to the next middleware so in this case this is how I actually pass it to the next middleware next I pass in the request and the response a PSR 7 request and a PSR 7 response now what happens if I were to add this so first it runs in sequence uh, the request comes to hello action first so hello action will process the request after that okay I have a response hello Zion then I pass this request and response to the next middleware which is welcome action okay so previously this is hello Zion the request parameter is Zion the first middleware say okay my response is hello Zion now let me pass it to the next middleware which is welcome action so if I will refresh this I'll get welcome Zion so let's look at what is the difference same thing PSR 7 name spaces class welcome action is a plain PHP class no extension it does not extend any framework specific classes same method signature I taking a PSR 7 request I taking a PSR 7 response and I taking uh, the next middleware so the old response body which is hello Zion then I create a new response body I replace hello with welcome and I write it into the stream and I create a new response the new response is I will replace the body in the old response after that I'll pass it to the next middleware but in this case there's no more next middleware so your final output is welcome Zion now what happens supposing let me add another one off action so I want it to run it through some authentication probably some username or password or some uh, uh, OAuth credentials and only when it passes then it will work so the request will go to go through off action first okay let us try what will happen okay uh, it says by haste nothing so let's look at what is the value in off action same thing PSR 7 class action a plain old PHP class with no framework specific classes same signature take in a PSR 7 request PSR 7 response and uh, next middleware first I will check for query, uh, query parameters 
and I check for a secret key, a secret key. If the secret key equals to this value, then I will return welcome Zion, or else I'll just say bye bye Hayes. So actually, 2016 when I was conducting this workshop, right, thanks to our neighbors down south, right, we actually had a lot of uh, haze during September. So that's why I buy haze. So let me try inputting the secret 2016 22nd August. Welcome, Zion. So this is the secret. If I pass in the correct secret, you will actually just return the original response to the next middleware. If I don't pass the secret, that means I fear my authentication, then I will override the body and write something else say by his. And I'll just return the new response straight away. I don't even pass it to the next middleware. Okay, you notice, huh? If I pass the authentication, I will pass the request and response to the next middleware. If I fail the authentication, I will return the response straight away. I don't even pass to the next middleware because no point why you fail it. So it's as if you go to the cashier, right? Today I was buying something for my niece, for my newborn niece. Go to uh, this uh, McDonald's, so asking for this uh, dinosaur book. So supposing if I go to the cashier, uh, is this dinosaur book still available? I want to buy a Happy Meal for my niece, right? Uh, don't have it. They won't even bother telling the kitchen to prepare a Happy Meal for me. They'll just tell me, sorry, I'll stop. Then I'll just go back. I'll eat something else instead. Okay. So in this case, you either short circuit, that means you cut out and you return the response straight away, or you pass the request response to the next middleware. So this is the excitement and the promise of PSR7 because it gives rise to, PSR, uh, to middleware which uh, is now documented in PSR15. So imagine, no more framework specific components. You have your Zen framework libraries, you have your Symfony components, you have your level uh, packages, no more. And the code that I've just written over here, it is just a plain PHP class that uses PSR7 libraries. Supposing if I don't have a Zen Diatros, let's say, uh, Zat, let's say uh, Gus wrote a new library to implement PSR7, I can just easily drop it in. And all these methods will still exist. All these methods will still work. I can take this whole class and dump it in another framework, in another project. It will still work. So that is the promise to actually uh, stop the proliferation of uh, frameworks. So you always hear about serverless, right? Let me give you a new buzzword, frameworkless. Okay? So we go back to the good old PHP days. So actually, um, middleware is very simple. It is basically taking a request, pass it to a lambda or a black box. The black box is the middleware and return a response. Simple as it is. Um, for this, uh, at my previous job and also how I came about this was uh, Zen Expressive. So as Zen Expressive actually helps you to get started with PSR 15 middleware in minutes. So it uses uh, PSR 15 middleware, PSR 7 HTTP uh, uh, messages and uh, all this stuff. So you may be wondering, but what if I want to use a particular library, let's say for creating my template or model, uh, because you're only returning a PSR 7 response, right? then you will do so via constructor dependency injection. You will just inject your external dependencies via the constructor. So you are not dependent on a particular vendor or library. So let me see with this. And that's the end. Thank you very much. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? Yes. So now the PSR, like say one or two, uh, or is uh, you still can use or if it's out? 
No, they are still they are still there. They are still there. So a lot of PHP projects uh, they actually put it in that continuous integration. So when you commit to the repository, straight away they will run through the test and check whether it conforms to PSR one and PSR two. That's the most basic. PSR one, two, PSR one, PSR two, and PSR four. The auto loading standard. So if you look at this, uh, the composer file. So PSR four, most projects go PSR four now. And uh, they will check for PS, uh, conformance with PSR1 and PSR2. So if your test do not even pass PSR1 and PSR2, the senior developer won't prob will probably don't even do the code review at all. So if you want to find out more about PSR, you can actually go to the website. You just type PSR2 or something. Uh, And let me see. Uh, okay, currently there's so many PSR one coding standard, PSR two coding style, four auto loading standard, PSR seven, eleven, fifteen, uh, and there are some in review. There's an extended coding style. Uh, PHP dot standard huggable interface, which is just for fun, uh, and deprecated zero. So twenty over PSR over here. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah.